So, you want to get into Minecraft modding? Great choice. Get settled in because you will be here a while, troubleshooting, developing ideas, and running the game more times than you could ever possibly count. So let's start with the basics. First, head to the Fabric website so that you can download it. Now, before proceeding, make sure that all instances of Minecraft are closed, including the launcher. Run the file you just downloaded and begin by selecting the Client tab where you will choose whichever version you intend to use. This version should match the mods you will be using, so I will choose 1.19.3. We will cover that more in the next section. However, leaving everything else at their defaults should work just fine. But if you want to check over them, see that the loader version is the latest available. More importantly, see that Create Profile is selected, then click Install. Note that this window will come up if you have a Minecraft instance open. You can just click No and then close the instance and then reinstall it as you were. To check that this step has worked, head over to the Minecraft launcher and you should find a new profile included among those listed. Select the fabric installation and when Minecraft loads, you will see a screen like this. With this done, we can now start adding mods, so close Minecraft. For future reference, and in case I don't say it afterward, Whenever you change something about Minecraft, close it beforehand to make sure the changes take effect. Finding mods online is easy enough by simply searching for specific names, but a better option is to find a directory, like the one available on CurseForge. I will be demonstrating the installation of a mod with the mod Origins. Now every mod on CurseForge will have a description available to help you find a selection of mods that interest you. Importantly, mods also have dependencies that is, one or several mods that the mod relies on in order for it to run properly. The Origins description is very well done in that it broadcasts this information, but for other mods, click the tab labeled Relations. Make sure Dependencies is selected, along with the type of dependency being required. This shows that you only need the Fabric API. Head over to the tab labeled Files to see what versions are available. As of creating this guide, Origins is only available for version 1.19.3 and earlier. The next step is installing the same version for the Fabric API. The API is available for 1.19.4, but this version does not match, so scroll down until you find 1.19.3. Now that you have whichever mods you want to install downloaded, head over to your Minecraft Mods folder. There are a few ways to do this, but my preferred method is with File Explorer. Open File Explorer with the folder icon here, or by typing it into the Windows search feature, and once open, you will navigate to the folder by first clicking the tab at the top, which shows whichever file you have open. With the tab highlighted, type percent app data percent to open roaming on your computer. Double click on the .minecraft folder as shown, and then do the same on the mods folder. Open another instance of File Explorer. This can be done by right-clicking the icon and then selecting File Explorer again. In this instance, click the folder on the left labeled Downloads. Move the Fabric API and Origin files into the Mods folder from the Downloads folder. With this all done, let's test everything we have so far. Open the Minecraft Launcher and run the Fabric Client as before, and open a new world for testing. When you do, you should see this screen appear, which means that you have properly installed both Fabric and Origins. Congratulations! Assuming all the above has worked, you might want to try your hands at your own custom Origins, so let's take a look at how someone would do that. If you want help with the coding or creating ideas for an Origin, I made a series about that which you should definitely check out for some more in-depth theory about creating powers. Much of what I cover is also covered there. Either way, click the revolution at the bottom, and selecting Origins Data Pack pack version 1.19, 1 through 3, will bring you to this window here. First go to Meta. The name can be whatever you want. For simplicity's sake, I will call mine My Origin. You should also check to see that the corresponding pack format matches the same version as Fabric. In this instance, 1.19, the pack format 10 is correct. With that done, head to the Origins tab and right-click, then click New File. This file is the actual origin itself, so we can call this name. Finally, go to Origins Layers and Origin Origin and type name in the box. You want to make sure these names match. That is the one here and here. 
Now, create a new file under powers. I'll call mine power. And to show this all works, I'll give myself creative flight because I always get flight the first chance I can in these games. Same as before, you want the names to match. So the power name here, as well as the one within the origins folder itself. I have used generic names thus far to keep everything different so that you can see what goes where. Suffice to say that when you create an origin, you would want something a little bit more specific. Now, assuming all the above was done correctly, your origin will now load when you download it as a fabric file and move it to your mods folder. Next, I will address a few common mistakes, which will cause a custom origin to act differently when installed. First, make sure that the fabric origins mod and fabric API all match the same version and that running them by themselves works. Always use the fabric client when working with these files. Next, check that under the meta tab, the pack format also matches the correct version. If this is correct, then we can move on to troubleshooting the file itself. First, if the name in the origins tab and the one held here under origins layers in origin origin don't match, your origin will not load at all. However, the default origins should load still. And if they don't load at all, it's likely a different problem, one that probably would be solved by making sure that your fabric versions match. The second common mistake is not naming a power correctly. If the name in the powers tab and the one listed in the origin itself don't match, your origin should still load in the list, but the power will not be displayed below the origin's description. A similar error can be encountered if you make an incorrect formatting issue that can be resolved by doing some troubleshooting with the coding. These are the most common issues I've run into and are part of the learning process of working with these types of files. Double and triple check all of the above when you're working with origins and you will find a lot of success. If, however, the default origins have been loaded correctly and you have not made any of the common and understandable mistakes people make when working with these files, it's time to look for some other sources. If you want to watch or read more information about what I've discussed so far in this guide, I highly recommend reading the documentation available on the origins creator itself and the origins documentation on their wiki. I will attach the links in the description. You can also see more about the installation and use of this tool in a video by its creator, which I have used many times to refresh my memory on the steps. For more direct help, you can find both the Origins and Origins Creator Discords on the site as well. They will have a lot of experience both with getting an origin working as well as creating individual powers. I would highly recommend making use of that resource. You're also more than welcome to ask questions in the comments below. I love engaging with y'all and trying to puzzle out how these programs work. And if you give me a really interesting problem, like summoning a zombie army, I will work on it and put a video out on it in depth. All right then, uh, get to making those mods work for you instead of the other way around. I'm done here.